Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the software release process, so let's go ahead and get started. So what is the release process, the software release process? It's also referred to as release management. It defines the process from taking software from a developer's computer all the way through development servers all the way out to production, and it defines the layers of software that get promoted and how that promotion takes place and the exit criteria to successfully exit one gate to the next gate. Now many organizations have their own processes that are customized to meet their specific needs but they generally follow the same type of progression going from layer to layer to layer. The number of layers sometimes vary depending on the organization Large organizations may have more layers that they go through and smaller organizations may have fewer, but generally speaking, all the steps are the same. This is a formal process in most organizations and sign-offs are needed from various layers of management in order to place software into production. So typically this might be a software development manager. There would also be somebody from the business that verifies that the software is ready to go. Also, there might be somebody from an operational standpoint so that personnel are scheduled in order to make the release and that resources are planned for the proper release date and the proper release window is secured for releasing software as well. So let's go ahead and talk about the next steps and look at the individual layers of how software is released. So if you look at this slide, there are four layers of the progression from development all the way to production. The first layer is the development servers where programmers will check in their code and make their, their daily modifications and do a build process. Once the software is determined stable by the development staff, it will be promoted into a QA or test environment where users will actually try the system and the QA staff to make sure that the new changes are actually functional. This is an iterative process and will be repeated many times during whatever the development cycle is. If it's an agile cycle, it might be two or three weeks. If it's more of a waterfall model, it may be a longer window than that. Once software has been successfully functionally tested in the test environment, the next step is to go to a staging environment. And a staging environment would mirror production in every way possible. Now this may be limited depending on your organization's budget, but in large organizations the, the goal is to have stage to be an exact identical replica of production in every way possible. Memory, CPU, disk drives. Uh, if it's a physical environment, hopefully they'll, they'll be clones of each other, the same model of computer. You want this to be as like, like production as possible. So in this layer, Functional te or performance testing is done now that the functional testing has been complete and also integration testing may take place at this point as well. Finally, after stage, the software is put into production and is monitored then by the operations staff to ensure that there are no problems with the software after it goes live. Let's look at each one of these layers in a little bit more detail. The first layer we'll talk about is development. This is the environment where programmers will check their daily work into this environment and it's the first level of integration in the process. Many environments will have a nightly build and check-in process so that freshly checked in code gets built overnight, perhaps even some unit tests run against it, and it's put into test the next morning is ready to go. If code is not ready to go from programmers, they simply don't check the code in and it's not integrated into the latest build process. This environment may be the early testing area for operating system updates and system updates in general. It's a very good environment to catch any kinds of problems early on. So if you're thinking about upgrading your production environment to the next rev of the operating system or a major patch level, a lot of times this is a good place to test those early operating system updates and changes the development staff can usually find those pretty quickly if there's going to be problems or issues with that. So that's really it for the development environment. Let's talk about now the QA and test environment. So now let's talk about the QA and testing environment. This is used primarily for functional testing, but it can also be used by the software staff for demos. If customers that are involved in the project want to see progress or they have questions about features, 
or if the development staff has questions about features, this is a great place to show demos so that latest code can be demonstrated and things don't get too far down the road without the customers being surprised. You never want to surprise customers with features that they don't want or they don't need. So the other thing it can also be used for, it can be used for a training environment. Now larger corporations may have a fifth environment or a training environment that's separate from the development stack so that they can separate this out if it's a large enough group of people training so that there aren't interruptions with the software development process and training can be done separately. So this is typically updated by the development staff or an automated build process that may happen every night or it may be a scheduled build process so that code is coordinated. It perhaps runs through some type of unit testing and development before being promoted to test. And it may be a frequent update that takes place. A customer may be testing a function, they may have a problem, and a patch may be put in as they're testing it to help fix and, and speed up the development process. Again, end users are typically involved in this environment. They want to see software well before it's released. And also the QA staff will verify that all of this code is functional before it moves out of this environment. So that's the last step of this process before code leaves the QA and testing environment and moves on to, to the stage, it needs to be signed off here by the QA staff that all the functionality is ready to go and move to the next step. So the next area we'll talk about is staging. Earlier I mentioned that staging should be identical product to production and this is the case that where performance or load testing is done. You'll want to see that the software will perform with the maximum number of users that you'll have. And you also want to take it to a breaking point to see what is the maximum number of users that the system can support by taking this to the extreme. So this is the load testing part of it. How many concurrent users can the system actually support? You want this to be a number higher than, of course, than the number, the peak number that's projected to use the system. You can also use this area for integration testing as well. If there are other systems that the system interfaces with, you'll want to test that here. And you want to test scenarios that are really as valid and close to real world scenarios that you can to make sure that when you put the system into production, it performs well. So again, this environment is really the last step before production. And the final test here is that code must pass any performance or integration testing before it's promoted to production. So at this point, if everything passes, then the release will be planned and plans will be scheduled for a particular release. So let's go ahead and talk about the production rollout process and the final step of the software promotion process. So now that the code is passed functional testing and performance testing, it's ready to go to production. So the last step of this is actually updating the production server with the new code. This is typically not done by the development staff. In most large organizations, there's a separate operational staff that has access to the production servers. In most large environments, the development staff should not and does not have access to the production environment. And it goes through a controlled release process so that only authorized personnel are putting the changes into the production environment. This is done to have a separation of duties and so that the right people have right access uh, to, to each level of environment. So typically the code would be either copied from the staging environment or it would be done from an automated build process so that the operations staff knows exactly which code is moving into the production environment. These, these software artifacts are also usually tagged with some, some type of labeling. If there's DLLs or link libraries, the versioning is built into the software and so that the versions can be controlled and tracked. The best types of release process are, are done through some type of automation so that the process is repeatable. Again, this requires a formal sign-off to update the production environment. In, in addition, once the software is successfully put into production, usually a smoke test is done. A smoke test validates that the software is actually working as expected. So for example, if you're putting out a system that's a transaction processing system, you may run a couple of real transactions, but through some type of dummy account or non-paying account to make sure that the software functions properly from end to end. 
This is usually the last step of the production process to verify that everything is working properly before everybody packs up and goes home. And then also an all clear message is usually sent out notifying senior management or the people that are involved with the product that you're updating that all the updates have gone successfully, everything is done, and, the, and people can resume normal operations. Part of this release process is scheduling a window, a release window. So this is typically done at times where the least impact can be had on the system. So this would be times of lease usage. So for many systems, this is late in the evening or on a weekend or maybe even a holiday weekend. Obviously, if you're some type of retail environment, a holiday weekend may be the worst possible time to do that. But the organization and the software development team will work to find a release window that's suitable to put the software into production. Another consideration with the release window is how much time is estimated to take to, to make the release. If you have to take systems offline, backup databases, copy files, a time estimate is necessary to make sure that the release window is long enough to support the update that's necessary. So these are all the things that go into the production re release. So let's go ahead and wrap things up. In summary, we've looked at all the steps that are necessary to take code from the development environment all the way to production. The release management process is designed to successfully deliver high quality software. The process really is designed to minimize risk for the organization and really good software development organizations try to continuously improve their release management process. After all, this is their main function is de delivering software and the release management part of this is critical in controlling quality and making sure that the organization has a good product each and every time. So this is a challenging process. A lot of times releases are done under very difficult circumstances and tight timelines. So in summary, that's it for the release management process. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.